entrance Antipon. Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. Exult and be satisfied at her the song of her. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. The church, the Christian life, is all about people. So I want to welcome those of you who are watching. There's about 40 people already online. Perhaps a few more now, since I started talking. And uh, welcome especially to those who uh, I've seen their names pop up. Jan, John, David, Tony, Anne, Pat, Stella, Margaret, Claire, Angela... And Deacon Paul, I don't know how many times I've told you about talking in mass, well probably hardly ever actually, uh, but I noticed that Deacon Paul and John are having a conversation just as we began that first hymn listening to it. You're very, very welcome. We're in difficult times and yet we should also be full of joy. Today's Gospel's very much about that. The raising of Lazarus, the great grief of his sisters, the great joy they meet in Christ. And so now, as we begin this Mass, let's call to mind our sins and ask God for his pardon, his mercy, his peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. I'm delighted that the Liturgy of the Word is going to be led partly by you, parishioners, uh, not here of course. All the voices other than mine that you hear and the music has been provided by recordings. And so we're going to have our first reading, which is from the prophet Ezekiel, and it's been read by Claire Jackson. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this. I am now going to open your graves. I mean to raise you from your graves, my people, and lead you back to the soil of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and raise you from your graves, my people, and I shall put my spirit in you, and you will live. And I shall resettle you on your own soil. And you will know that I, the Lord, have said and done this. It is the Lord who speaks. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And our responsorial psalm now is going to be led by Chris Wilson. With the Lord there is mercy. Fullness of redemption with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption from the depths I cry to you.
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The sisters, Martha and Mary, sent this message to Jesus. Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death, but in God's glory, and through it, the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, yet when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days before saying to the disciples, let's go to Judea. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he'll rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. Jesus said in great distress, with a sigh that came straight from the heart. 
Where have you put him? They said, see how much she loved him. There were some who remarked, he opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he'll smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, have I not told you that if you believe, you'll see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of all those who stand around me so that they may believe it was you who sent me. And when he said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, hear, come out. The dead man came out. His feet and hands bound with bands of stuff and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who'd come to visit Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Martha said to Jesus, if you'd been here, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. In times of sorrow, anxiety, stress, disappointment, we often have questions. Questions which nag us, questions which obsess us. The what if type questions. What if I'd been there? What if I'd visited more often? What if I'd done something slightly different? The questions which plague us with guilt when we pose them to ourselves. And they're questions which inflame us with anger if we direct them at others, direct them even at God. When we suffer hard knocks, when loss, sickness, misfortune besets us, it's not at all unusual to direct hard questions to God. Why? Why now? Why at all? And this is what Martha does. Martha's words seem harsh. They seem almost angry. And her sister echoes the same sitting in the house, not even going out to meet Jesus. Jesus had delayed going to visit his friend Lazarus for several days. And when he got there, so it seemed, he was too late. And the crowd mocked him. Ha! He healed the blind man. Couldn't he have stopped this? And Jesus wept at the loss of of his dear friend Lazarus. He wept at the grief of his family. He wept at the suffering of the world. Why didn't you get here sooner? Martha seems to say to him. If you had been here, this would not have happened. That's what the sisters say to Jesus. notice these words are yes spoken from anger and frustration but they're also more than that they're not only words of rebuke they're also words of faith if you'd been here he wouldn't have died and I know that even now they say to him in the midst of our struggle, our anxiety, our frustration and that's especially true at this time there is also and always hope 
And the hope that surrounds Lazarus in this story is a hope not simply for his sisters or his neighbours or even certainly not just to impress the crowd. It's a hope which transcends time and place, centuries, miles. It's a hope that's still recalled thousands of years after this event. A hope not just for this one man and for those who mourn him, but for all those who believe in the one who is the resurrection and the life. And now we affirm together our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Now, time for our petitions and bidding prayers. Some we've been asked to pray for, some prayers which have been given to us. Uh, in particular, we are asked to pray for all those who work in the uh, NHS and, of course, all those who support them in all sorts of other ways, volunteers and so on. In particular, from our own parish community, Martin Jones, the son of a parishioner who works in Newcastle-upon-Tyne, is a anaesthetist in the NHS. We pray for all those who are sick at this time, not just, of course, from this terrible illness, but for other reasons. In particular, we're asked to pray for uh, Gail Egan's mother, for Brian Hands and Peter Clamp, both of whom are sick in hospital. We give thanksgivings for all God's many blessings and a special thanksgiving today on behalf of Pat Wilson, who celebrates her birthday and of course, we pray also for all those who've departed this life, our own loved ones, those whose anniversaries fall at this time, and amongst the recently departed Canon Peter Taylor from Walsall, Canon John Berry, who's from the Diocese of Nottingham, and also for Val Marsh, who's departed this life. May they all rest in peace. And there's some prayers which uh, Archbishop Bernard gave to us, to the clergy, which I think help us to sum up uh, many of the things we're thinking and praying about. Let's pray for the most vulnerable, for those who lose their lives in this terrible ep epidemic and those who mourn. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let's pray for our courageous health workers that they may remain safe. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And let's pray also for all clergy, that they may support one another and guide the people of God prayerfully and full of hope through this time of crisis. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The children too have prayers to say and make. I know lots of children have been doing the rainbows. This rainbow has been drawn by Katie and Katie's also written a prayer, which she's now, a couple of prayers actually, which she's now going to read to us. Dear God, please pray for all those people that are ill who need special care when we are in hard times like this. Amen. Amen. Dear Mary, please pray for the old people and people that could die from this horrible virus down the world. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Katie. Thank you all for your prayers. Do continue to pray for all those people. And now as I prepare the altar for the celebration of Mass, we move on to some more rainbows, rainbows which have been drawn and displayed by children from our parish.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice to our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just, it's truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, always everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God, raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Bernard, our bishop, William and David, his assistants, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Vivian Ellen Daisy Bryan, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Thomas More, with Blessed John Sugar, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. And now we pray together the prayer which Jesus taught us all to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. And let's greet one another in the peace of Christ. Peace be with you all. And if you're wondering why the bells are ringing, it's because I forgot to reset the clock. So it's ringing to tell us that Mass is going to take place in half an hour, which of course it won't be. I'm sorry about that. God bless you all anyway. Peace be with you. Now it's quiet now. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon, the Lord anointed my eyes, I went, I washed, I saw and believed in God. And now I invite you to make an act of spiritual communion. The words on the screen, if you can see them, but obviously in your hearts too, as you're unable to receive the sacrament today, I'll lead you in this particular prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. By your head for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy. And grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as we leave now, uh, our parish people, I said it's all about people. It's all about people. It's about Lazarus. It's about Mary and Martha who were bereaved and struggled to understand God's purposes. It's about us who are in such a strange situation at the moment and perhaps an anxiety about our own, uh, our ourselves and our families and friends and the community which we're part of. Let's remember we are a community. We are together. Come back to me with all your Oh.